We've been thinking about the square roots of complex numbers recently and in order to understand what those square roots are and how they fit onto the complex plane we have to move from thinking about them just as algebraic objects or arithmetic objects that you know you just square it and then the coefficients just turn out nicely. We need to move to thinking about them as visual objects and, and understand them geometrically. Now we've already seen a bit of this before when we noticed that you can solve for the square roots of a complex number not just in rectangular form but also in exponential form or polar form by extension. Um, but in exponential form it's really nice and neat and you get some visual intuition from that and what we're going to do is push on that and expand that intuition with this question. So let x plus i y squared equal a plus i b then we have uh, x squared whoopsie daisy x squared minus y squared equals a and 2xy equals b. So let's just remember where that comes from. When you take, uh, excuse me, if you take this guy here and just expand the left hand side, what you'll get is x squared plus 2ixy, um, and then you're gonna get plus i squared y squared, but i squared is just minus one, right? So you get minus y squared. All of that is what you get from expanding the left hand side, but from the right hand side, you get this. Now. What you should see here is that uh, the x squared minus y squared is the real component. There are no i's attached to it. So x squared minus y squared, the real component on the left hand side, must be equivalent to the real component on the right hand side. And that's, that's what's written here. So this is from the real. Whereas the uh, 2ixy, that's imaginary, just like ib is imaginary. So when you compare the imaginary parts, 2 times x times y, that equals b. So this is what we get from the imaginary side over here. So that's how you get these two simultaneous equations. Now, we've been used to solving those simultaneous equations just by crunching the algebra, right? By doing some substitution, bit of rearrangement, and then your solutions um, arise from these equations. But what this question is asking us to do is to think about them Graphically, you can see it says, uh, for the moment, assume that both A and B are positive, then sketch the graphs of these two equations on the same number plane. Hmm. Now, we, we haven't been sketching graphs all that recently, um, on a Cartesian plane, certainly, but uh, we need to call back all that knowledge and skill to be able to handle these two guys here, okay? So what we're gonna have a look at is trying to understand the graphs of these um, on the same number plane and see what conclusions we can draw from this, okay? So, the first one, uh, which we got from the real components of the left-hand, right-hand side, is x squared minus y squared equals a. We're gonna see what that looks like. So if you uh, go to some graphing software, um, you'll be able to put together a graph of this. And I'm appealing to this right away because in the old version of the extension two course, there was a topic called conics, which was short for conic sections. Um, conic as in it comes from a cone uh, because there's a, a wonderful series of shapes which seem all disconnected um, that we've learnt about in mathematics already. Circles, ellipses, parabolas, and the shape you're about to see, they're all connected um, by their relationship to the cone. Now, let me try and explain what's going on. I'm going to graph the equation that they suggested to us before. x squared, and then I think they said minus y squared, and that's gonna be equal to a. Now you can see I've got A set to equal 1 for, uh, for a moment. Just before I type in 1, I want you to have a think. Maybe pause the video and um, try and contemplate this. If you've never seen an equation like this before, what shape would you pr predict to emerge from it? Um, you, know, you know what y equals x squared looks like? That's a parabola. Um, you know what x squared plus y squared equals a constant? You know what that is? That's a, that's a circle, right? So what happens when you get x squared minus y squared. What kind of shape would emerge from that? Like I said, I hope you uh, spend some time to have to think about it before you now play and see what's going to go on. When I put in it's equal to a, watch what shape emerges. What is this? Uh, well, it's a very strange shape. For starters, it's not a function. If you think back to earlier uh, in year 11, when we were looking at um, functions, we said that if you put in one input and x value, you should get one output, one y value. Um, if I put in something like x equals two, in fact, I'll just quickly draw x equals two, x equals two, there's a single x value, and it does not have uh, just one y value, one output, it's got two of them. Um, looks like plus or minus a square root of three, okay? Um, so this is not a function, it is what we call, what we classify a relation, um, but what other kind of way do you have to describe this shape? Let's get rid of this, we don't need it anymore. This actually is a shape that's surprisingly familiar, you just haven't looked at it in this orientation before. So if I just go back to where I was drawing, 
Here's one I prepared earlier. If you have a look at, oh, no, I'm partially deleting that. That's not what I want to do. If you have a look at this shape here, oh, go away. I'm highlighting. Why am I highlighting? There we go. There's my highlighting by accident. There's the shape which we just got out of uh, doing this graph. What I'm going to do is something a bit unusual. I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to rotate it. And I hope that once I've done the rotation, it will look a little more familiar. So let me spin this around and I'm going to spin it exactly 45 degrees. That looks pretty all right to me. Move that down the page a little bit. If it's still not looking obvious, let me put in an extra line or two. I'm gonna put one vertically through, let's get that straight, there we go. Vertically through there, and I'm gonna match it with one horizontally through here. Oh, that's pretty close. I'm reasonably satisfied with that. All right, when you have a look at this, does this look like a familiar shape? This is, of course, the hyperbola, even though from the original you saw um, we had to rotate this thing through 45 degrees or pi on 4 radians. So this is the same shape, but it's looked at at a different orientation. This is still a hyperbola. So it's just a different kind of hyperbola than you've dealt with. Uh, like I said, it used to be dealt with in the old course, so you can have a look at there. I've got videos on this if you're curious. Now, what they then say is to investigate what happens when you plot this on the same graph as the other equation that we got simultaneously. x squared minus y squared equals a, that's what happens when you compare the real components on the left and right hand side. The other equation, was 2xy is equal to b. And just like a, b is something which can change in value, but it's a constant of some kind. So I'm going to put in the b. Now, I'm not hesitating on this one because this is a shape you are much more familiar with. This is just the regular hyperbola, right? Um, the one that you're used to dealing with, which has kind of this horizontal vertical thing. Um, by the way, this is not just um, any hyperbola. This is called the rectangular hyperbola because the two asymptotes, which in this case are the x and y axes, the, the two asymptotes are at right angles, and that's actually what rectangular means. Rect just means right, and angle means angle, so rectangular means right angled. That's why rectangles are called rectangles, all the angles are 90 degrees. So this is the rectangular hyperbola that you're used to dealing with, like y equals 1 over x, um, but this has you know, this is not just one over x, this might be something else over x because of the b and the 2, which uh, change the coefficients. Now, the question pushes further on this. It doesn't just say graph these, right? It says, think about this a little further. It says, what feature of your sketch indicates that there are two square roots of A plus IB? All right, we need to pedal back for a moment and think about what's going on here. This equation here will tell us that X plus IY, whatever particular x and whatever particular y those are, if you square them, they'll give you A plus IB. In other words, X plus IY whatever the values of x and y that satisfy this, those will be the square roots. Now, we've already worked with square roots a little bit before, so we know that every complex number um, has two square roots. Uh, in fact, every number has two square roots. But how can we draw that conclusion from our, um, our sort of graph that we've got here? Well, it comes back to what we did algebraically when we arrived at these two solutions and when we proceeded from there. What do we do at this point? If you got like x squared minus y, minus y squared equals one and you got two xy equals whatever other value, four or five or something like that, what did you do from there? Well, you solved simultaneously, didn't you? You were trying to find some values of x and y that would exist for both of these two solutions, sorry, both of these two equations at the same time. Uh, that's what solving simultaneously means. Find a solution that simultaneously makes sense or satisfies both equations. Now, when you are solving simultaneously, what you're really finding, like if I told you, uh, here's an equation, y equals x, and then here's another equation, uh, y equals x squared. If I asked you to solve these simultaneously, what you would be finding is an x and a y which work for both equations, which is to say an x and a y, that's a pair of coordinates, that sit on both graphs at the same time. Uh, what we're finding are points of intersection. So I want you to have a look at this, right? The points of intersection between this green and blue graph, you can actually see um, by plotting on here and here. These are the particular points of intersection between them. And because if we move A around, um, you can see I'm gonna keep it positive because um, A and B, they initially want us to restrict it to positive. If I move A, you can see it changes the shape of my hyperbola. Uh, it changes its kind of scale or its, its sort of stretchiness, right? Um, but 
every time you move, like no matter how far you move, I mean my, my max is out of 10, but you could make it anything you like, it's gonna keep on moving outwards and it will always have these two points of intersection between the green and the red grass. No matter which way, you know, however far you change these numbers, you're still gonna get those points of intersection, right? 